Jaguar's F-Pace has always brought a well-judged compromise of class, performance and capability to the luxury mid-sized SUV segment. This much improved version further enhances its proposition with mild hybrid engine electrification plus a plug-in model, along with more sophisticated media connectivity and a far smarter cabin. It's now the car it always should have been, and if you're shopping in the segment for mid-sized premium badge SUVs, it offers a refreshing, arguably more dynamic and very Jaguar-like alternative to key rivals. there's one type of car that epitomises this period in motoring history, it's the SUV. So many buyers desire them, and Jaguar wants a slice of this action. As a result, back in 2015, the British company brought us its first ever model of this kind, the F-Pace, complete with high-riding driving position, four-wheel drive, and even some moderate off-road ability. Five years on, it was updated to create the car we're going to look at here. Why it took Jaguar so long to enter a segment that now dominates its sales is a difficult question to answer. There was never the investment to create such a thing until Indian conglomerate Tata took over control in 2008. And afterwards, given Jaguar's close partnership with Land Rover, there was a management disinclination for the two marks to cross into each other's territory. But it was thinking that had to change. At the same time, around the time of this model's original launch, Jaguar's engineers were grappling with the challenge of all-electric engineering, eventually responded to with another similar-sized SUV, the battery-powered I-Pace, launched in 2018, which has since gone on to become one of the company's best-selling models. Safe in the knowledge that mixing the SUV genre with electrification would hit the sales sweet spot, Jaguar then combined the two in late 2020 to create the hugely improved F-Pace model we're testing here. Obviously, the existence of the I-Pace means there's no need for a full battery EV version of this car. The F-Pace's sophisticated aluminium chassis doesn't allow for that anyway. But you can now have a PHEV plug-in hybrid variant, the P400e derivative, we have here with an EV range of 33 miles. The more affordable diesel combustion variants that most F-Pace customers will continue to choose get a lesser sprinkling of electrification courtesy of an MHEV mild hybrid system. And if you really don't care about the polar ice cap and only prioritise performance in an SUV of this type, you'll be pleased to hear that the wild V8 petrol-powered SVR model continues on at the top of the range. Away from engines, the cabin's been completely redesigned around a cutting-edge PIVI Pro infotainment system. There's also a smarter exterior look and sophisticated safety. So, has all of this revitalised the F-Pace sales perspective proposition in the face of tough rivals also recently refreshed? Cars like the Audi Q5, the Mercedes GLC and the BMW X3. Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. Virtually all SUV makers will tell you that their cars are luxurious, sporty and capable. Usually, though, the truth is that the model in question especially emphasises one particular attribute, often to the detriment of others. Take the mid-sized luxury segment of this market. A Porsche Macan is great to drive, but pretty limited off-road. A Mercedes GLC feels luxurious, but isn't especially rewarding at the wheel. And a Land Rover Discovery Sport will take on the wilderness, but won't make you feel special and cosseted when you take a seat inside. Can a better compromise between all these virtues really be reached? Well, this Jaguar F-Pace has always claimed to offer it. When Jaguar makes that claim, you tend to sit up and take notice. After all, the brand knows a thing or two about ride and handling, and its Land Rover connections have given it plenty of understanding on the subject of four-wheel drive too. Plus, of course, the company has had an awful long time to stand back and look at the market, then come up with something better. This F-Pace does, after all, date back only as far as 2017. 
If you've not tried one before, on paper, it looks as if it might be rather good. The low slung looks matched by equally sophisticated aluminium underpinnings. Unlike the smaller E-Pace, this isn't a Jaguar body slung on top of a Land Rover's running gear. Instead, the F-Pace uses the IQAL chassis from the company's much admired XE and XF saloons. Architecture lightly updated here to accommodate this revised model's more electrified engine range, which, as before, drives through a smooth-shifting ZF 8-speed auto gearbox. A few other little detail engineering changes feature here. Segment first, active road noise cancellation technology further improves the already impressive refinement. And there's a new auto vehicle hold system to make pulling away from uphill junctions a bit less of a faff. But with this revised F-Pace, the big story is what now lies beneath the bonnet. Mild hybrid tech to embellish all of the diesel engines and one of the petrol units too. Plus, there's also the introduction of the plug-in hybrid P400e PHEV model we're trying here. We'll start with the mild hybrid model since those are going to be the most popular. This MHEV tech is applied to Jaguar's 2.0-litre Ingenium diesel engines offered in D165 and D200 forms, the figures designating engine output. And it also features on the two six-cylinder variants, the D300 diesel and the P400 petrol. In every case, of course, the concept is the same. A belt-integrated starter generator harvests energy usually lost when slowing or braking. That energy is then stored in a little 48-volt lithium-ion battery secreted beneath the rear seat before being intelligently redeployed to assist the powertrain when accelerating away and delivering a more refined engine stop-start system. Don't get your hopes up too high when it comes to the efficiency running cost difference the MHEV system will make, but you should notice a bit more zip away from rest, courtesy of that extra harvested energy. And sure enough, you do. You'd have to be on a bit of a budget to choose an F-Pace with the base D165 diesel. 163 PS isn't a huge amount to propel along an SUV weighing nearly two tonnes, and in this form, it certainly feels slower than the performance figures. Rest to 60 in 9.2 seconds on route to 121 miles an hour would suggest. Courtesy of a torque boost from 380 to 430 newton meters, the mid-range D200 diesel is far more satisfying. The performance figures improve to 7.6 seconds and 130 miles an hour if you use the transmission's quicker responding S setting or take control with the lovely zinc alloy shifter paddles. And a D200 is of course far better suited to the towing duties that some owners may have in mind. Unless you'll be plugging your F-Pace in, it'll come with a useful braked towing limit of 2,400 kilos. A six-cylinder D300 diesel would of course be even better. Here, torque output skyrockets to 650 newton meters and the performance stats jump to 6.1 seconds and 143 miles an hour. But if performance is your priority in choosing an F-Pace, you choose one of the petrol models. Probably not the base P250, the only mainstream variant that does without mild hybrid embellishment. Though in that form, this SUV is more than acceptably rapid, making 60 miles an hour in 6.9 seconds on the way to 135 miles an hour. Better, if you can afford it, is the properly powerful P400, whose i6 six-cylinder engine is an MHEV, which storms to 60 miles an hour in 5.1 seconds to the accompaniment of a rather evocative growl on the way to 155 miles an hour. Potential Porsche Macan buyers will love it. There's no real need to go faster than that in a car of this kind, but if you want to anyway, the wild P550 SVR variant awaits at the top of the range with its 5-litre V8 supercharged engine that'll howl its way to the 60-mile benchmark in just 3.8 seconds and, on an autobahn or on the hangar straight at Silverstone, keep accelerating until you reach 178 miles an hour. One for the very brave, perhaps. All of these engines are fundamentally familiar from before, and there's even plenty of carryover with this revised model lineup's one completely fresh powertrain, the plug-in hybrid setup featuring in the P400e variant that, as mentioned earlier, we've chosen to test today. 
At the heart of this PHEV model's engine bay, you will, after all, find Jaguar's usual 2-litre petrol Ingenium turbo unit. Here, though, it's been coupled with a 143 PS electric motor powered by a rear-mounted 17.1 kilowatt hour battery that, when fully charged, can facilitate a 33-mile all-electric driving range and, if you wanted to, take the car up to 87 miles an hour without burning fossil fuel. For that, you'd need to keep the drivetrain in its EV setting, one of three provided PHEV modes. The other two are hybrid and save. The total power output this combination generates, 404 PS, is a fair slug more than you'll get from obvious BMW and Audi rivals in this segment. But unfortunately, this P400E's portlier weight, think around 2.2 tonnes, cancels out any potential performance benefit. Mind you, this four-cylinder plug-in F-Pace still manages to go a little faster than its six-cylinder conventional P400 counterpart, making 60 miles an hour in five seconds dead, though weighing half as much as an Asian elephant fractionally restricts this PHEV variant's top speed to 149 miles an hour. That weight is something you very definitely feel if you're in a P400E and throw it through a series of tight, twisty corners in the way a likely owner rarely would which is a pity because it rather robs this car of the fluid, rather agile and mildly engaging drive dynamics that always marked it out from its German rivals. Fortunately, that demeanour's remained intact in the commoner, more affordable variants, which can make better use of the suspension arrangement borrowed from those Jaguar saloons we mentioned earlier, with double wishbones at the front and a multi-link rear axle, a setup you can optionally embellish with Jaguar's usual adaptive dynamics, adaptive damping system. It's standard on this PHEV. Yes, through the turns in a conventional diesel or petrol model, there's a touch more body roll than you'd get in an XE or an XF. And yes, the electric steering is a fraction less feelsome than an enthusiastic driver might ideally like. But neither of these things significantly affect the way that you can hustle mainstream versions of this car through any given bend, progressing in a manner that simply wouldn't be possible in most other SUVs. Of course, there are reasons for this that go beyond springs and dampers. There's the kind of torque vectoring system you get on performance coupes that, through tight turns, transfers traction to the wheel that can make best use of it. Plus, when Jaguar says this car's now mandatory all-wheel drive system was originally developed on the track, it means Silverstone, not the Serengeti. It's the defiantly rear-biased system first seen on the company's F-Type sports car, one that never diverts more than 50% of its power up front, a process that happens in milliseconds as soon as the first signs of wheel slip are detected. Another key tool in the F-Pace's armoury is Jaguar Drive Control, one of those setups that allows you to alter throttle response, steering feel and auto gear shift change timings, dependent on the way you want to drive. Simply make your choice between the various modes provided by this now restyled pop-up mode controller next to the stitched gear selector. Comfort and eco are fairly self-explanatory, while dynamic sharpens up the car nicely to the accompaniment of a red-tinged instrument display. There's also an extra rain, ice and snow option that activates all surface progress control, a low-speed cruise control that helps maintain progress and avoid wheel spin on low traction surfaces you power away from using a low traction launch system. If your car has Jaguar's configurable dynamics package, as it will have if adaptive damping has been fitted, you'd also get this dynamic eye screen that allows you to input your own specific dynamic or comfort settings for engine, steering, gear shift and suspension. Plus, there's a stopwatch, a lap timer and a G-meter to underline the brand's insistence that this is indeed the sports car of SUVs. Having configurable dynamics also allows you to order Jaguar's terrain response technology. It's ADSR, or Adaptive Surface Response setup, which works alongside the all-wheel drive system in challenging conditions. ADSR alters its response according to the surface to maximise grip, for instance when moving from tarmac to wet grass. Friction levels are automatically sensed and the car's throttle response adapted to stop the wheels from spinning. 
It's like having an expert sitting alongside you, making constant changes to suit the terrain. ADSR was developed at the challenging Land Rover Eastnor off-road test track, which we can tell you from personal experience. Includes rutted trails you simply couldn't even consider attempting in one of this car's German rivals. Not if you wanted to avoid a trip to the body shop anyway. That an F-Pace can cope here has a lot to do with its four-wheel drive systems, integrated IDD or Intelligent Driveline Dynamics control system, which when you're off-piste is continuously estimating not only the friction between the tyres and the surface, but also how much of the available grip is being exploited at each wheel. Hill launch assist further helps here, as does the kind of properly elevated ground clearance that's so often lacking in more dynamically orientated luxury SUVs. This Jaguar sits a decent 213 millimetres off the ground. One reason why it can wade through water up to 525 millimetres deep and cope with maximum approach and departure angles of 25.5 and 26 degrees respectively. It's yet another thing you simply wouldn't expect this car to be able to do. What you'll need it to be able to do, of course, is cruise with luxury saloon-style refinement, as all variants do. And to be able to smooth away the tarmac tears of the school run. Again, an F-Pace speciality. You'll also want this car to relax you on highway journeys, which this Jaguar will do more easily when fitted with the brand's optional adaptive cruise control with steering assist system, which takes care of most steering, braking and throttle duties for you. Providing your hands stay on the steering wheel, it works in urban traffic too. So, an F-Pace works just about everywhere, from farm trails to the frantic morning commute. It certainly isn't perfect, especially in this expensive plug-in form, but you might well think it's closer to being the perfect compromise in this segment than any other rival. It says much that Jaguar likes to market this F-Pace as the sports car of SUVs. The stylish shape remains pretty much exactly what we saw from the Coventry company CX-17 prototype, a car unveiled back in 2013 at the Frankfurt Motor Show. In production form, the lines turned out to be just as eye-catching. Chief stylist Ian Callum refusing to be constrained by the SUV sector's usual aesthetic design cues instead delivering a much more dynamic silhouette with a roofline lower and closer to the road than anything else in the segment. And not much has changed with this package of exterior updates, or at least you might think that, until you take a closer look. So let's do that and start up front. Now there's a sculpted new bonnet with a wider power bulge, that bonnet extending flush to the very top of the grille surround, eliminating the rather ugly shut line that previously ran across the nose. It flows into a larger, completely redesigned, heritage-inspired monogrammed mesh grille with diamond detailing and the classic Jaguar Growler badge. Flanking this appendage are redesigned all-LED quad headlights that are 10 millimetres slimmer than before, and these further up the range featuring double J daytime running light graphics and animated directional indicators. The upper and lower bumper sections have also been restyled, as have these corner intakes. Now, as before, most models will be sold in the R dynamic form we have here, distinguished from the standard variants by a cleaner, more open design for these huge corner intakes and a black finish for the grille. There are fewer changes in profile, though these side vents do now feature the iconic Jaguar Leaper. Big wheels are an intrinsic part of this design. The smallest rims you can now get across most of the range are 19 inches in size, and you can go all the way up to the big 21-inch alloys we have here. Otherwise, the silhouette's familiar from before. Jaguar's design team has done everything possible to break up and disguise the height of this SUV, hence this slash in the bodywork along the bottom of the doors under which runs this slim angled silver strip. There's a powerfully strong shoulder line too, while this line that runs from the wing vent into the front door is another neat touch. 
At the rear, the tail lights, originally inspired by the F-Type sports car, now have more in common with the I-Pace EV, featuring Jaguar's chicane illuminating graphic. You might not pick up on the fact that the tailgate is completely new, but an existing owner would be more likely to notice the redesigned lower bumper. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. Around 80% of the body is fashioned from lightweight aluminium, and some of it, the cross chassis rail, for example, even uses high-tech magnesium. So, subtle evolution outside. Will the same be true of the cabin? Actually, no. Unusually for a mid-term facelift, almost everything here has been fundamentally redesigned and is all the better for it. The focal point is this new and much more sophisticated, larger PIVI Pro central touchscreen. But there's also much else to catch the eye in an interior that feels very Jaguar, with an ambience completely different to that you'll find in German rivals. There's lots to take in if you happen to be used to the original model. Things like the sleeker vents, the dished three-spoke wheel and the more tactile gear lever, replacing the rising rotary dial used before. Surrounding it all, authentic finishes feature in beautifully formed shapes, reinvigorating Jaguar's rich lineage of luxury interiors. This smarter centre console has been redesigned too, sweeping up to meet the centre stack where a piano black panel houses classier climate dials embellished with a Jaguar Coventry established in 1935 motif. Lovely. The metal finishing you get here around the gear stick, on the steering wheel and along the door pulls really feels like metal, which isn't the case with rivals like the Mercedes GLC. And twin lines of double stitching decorate the dash and the door cards before continuing down both sides of the restyled lower console. Jaguar wants a lot of money for this car, but you can see where it's been spent. The whole cabin ambience is designed to make anyone coming to this car fresh from one of the company's saloons to feel instantly at home. And as before, the so-called sports command driving position delivers the kind of high set authoritative seating placement that SUV drivers like so much. Without perching you so far up that you lose the feel of being an integral part of the whole experience. It's a very well judged compromise positioning you perfectly for the kind of involving drive promised by the sports car marketing rhetoric. We remember that from the original version of this car but we also remember the rather clunky in control infotainment screen setup which didn't even have the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring tech that's long been a norm in this segment. But forget all of that now because this improved models replacement PIVI Pro system is one of the very best setups in its sector. It's touchscreen elegantly curved to match the instrument panel's profile, 11.4 inches in size and encased in the black satin finished magnesium frame. It's so much easier to use than the previous smaller in control setup, allowing the driver to carry out 90% of common tasks within two taps from the touchscreen, thanks to the simplified menu structure. Basically, what's on offer here is a whole fresh generation of infotainment, powered by dual SIM technology, with two LTE modems enabling the software to carry out multiple functions at the same time, such as streaming media or downloading software over the air updates that will enable the system to continually update itself. Previous owners will immediately notice how much quicker everything is, thanks to a built-in backup battery Initialization for the 3D navigation system takes just seconds. 4G Wi-Fi connectivity is optional, but if you have it, up to eight devices around the car can be connected, so your rear passengers will be grateful. This right-hand menu bar gives you quick access to this monitor's major sections, nav, media, audio, and a final icons option that connects you to a display that collects together everything else you might want to peruse. As usual with these kinds of systems, there's a split main home screen that prioritises the things you'll need most frequently, probably nav, phone and media as here. And Jaguar has made up for its tardiness in offering Apple CarPlay and Android Auto by making both elements available with the option of more convenient wireless connectivity. 
We are disappointed, though, to find that the incorporated voice control functionality here is nothing like as intuitive as that you'll find on German rivals. Still, there's a standard rear view camera and a lot of detail buried in the icon section. A dynamic eye, drive settings screen, tractional options like all surface information and low traction launch, an eco data segment, info on parking and a very informative weather menu that briefs you on climate instantly, hourly or five days ahead. Just about anything else you might need to know can be found in the instrument binnacle and you'll be particularly well served if you pay the extra for a plusher model with this interactive driver display instrument binnacle screen or stump up more to get it fitted in place with the usual conventional analog dials. This 12.3 inch TFT monitor standard with this PHEV variant and controlled not particularly intuitively by this new steering wheels rather cheap feeling hidden until lit switches is pretty much as customizable as the best instrument screens you'll find with rivals. If you don't want this conventional two dial layout you can prioritize a single dial or have the screen focus entirely on mapping, media or driver assistance graphics. Info panels to the left and right of the display can be configured with trip summary and media info or you can add a driver assistance graphic on the left or mapping onto the right. Plus a press of the end of the left steering column stalk varies this small lower readout between trip, average speed, average or instant fuel consumption and driving range info. Enough on media. What else might you need to know here? Oh, we've talked about the greater feeling of luxury inherent in this dash design, helped by the fact that it's no longer simply lifted from the XE saloon. Lovely touches are plentiful. The lovely cool zinc alloy gear shift paddles, the cricket ball style stitching on the gear lever, the split rim steering wheel, the knurled metallic rotary dials, the touch sensitive overhead lights, an ignition button that pulses red prior to startup, and if you opt for the Meridian audio system upgrade, these brushed metal laser etched lacquered silver speaker frets. Little ergonomic touches have been addressed too, like the way that the electric window switches have now been repositioned from the top of the door roll to the armrest, putting them within easier reach. We particularly like the seats, which were of the figure-hugging sports variety with the R-Dynamic trimmed models that most will want. On almost all variants, they're leather trimmed, of course, as standard, and even entry-level spec allows for lumbar support, heating and eight-way part electric adjustment. For this updated model, these front chairs have been revised with wider cushioning, optional front massage settings and larger heating and cooling areas for greater comfort. A fresh interior lighting design also adds to the premium effect with 10 selectable colours, an upper strip of light encircling the front of the cabin and a lower lighting zone that uses a softer waterfall effect. Plus, Jaguar has introduced a sophisticated cabin air ionisation system. We have it here with a PM 2.5 filter which features a filtration system capable of capturing ultra-fine particles. You activate it via a purify option on the climate screen. Overall then, there's much to like and little to criticise, though we still do have a few small issues. The standard 125 watt sound system audio setup isn't particularly impressive, presumably to encourage you towards the Meridian upgrade. The electric seat controls still feel a little flimsy and, as before, rear visibility isn't especially good, mainly due to the raked back rear screen, but also hampered by the rising door line and narrow rear quarter windows. So it's just as well that a rear view camera and all round sensors are standard. Storage space provision has improved, though, and this redesigned lower console now conceals away the cup holders with a sliding lid covering an area that also provides a small storage compartment along with a 12 volt socket. Though, when was the last time you actually used a 12 volt socket? Jaguar seems to have a thing about them because another 12 volt socket features within this lidded box between the seats. Though, fortunately here, you also get more useful USB ports, gratifyingly, of both the USB-A 
as well as the USB-C sort, so you don't have to have the ugly converter leads necessary with German rivals. This console around the gear lever has been redesigned in its lower as well as its upper section. There's now a see-through open aperture here at the bottom, framed by metallic hoops that's intended for small oddment storage, though it's so shallow that items placed here might be in danger of spilling out into the footwells during spirited cornering. Plus, you also get a big glove box with a pen clip and elasticated strap, decently sized door bins, ticket clips in the sun visors and the kind of overhead compartment for sunglasses that usually gets omitted where provisions made for the option of a big panoramic glass roof. As you can see here though, on an F-Pace you can have both. Curiously, Jaguar forces F-Pace customers of every trim grade to pay extra for the kind of wireless charging mat that nearly every executive needs these days. It sits in this open compartment at the base of the centre stack. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, as in the front, the doors open wide, which means it'll be easy to reach in and fit something like a child seat. And as you get in, also as in the front, you slide onto the seat rather than clamber up into it, as would be the case with some other SUVs. Once installed, two tall adults get more headroom than you might expect the raked back roof line to be able to provide. And there's reasonable standards of knee room too. Certainly more than you get with competitors like BMW's X3 and Porsche's Macan. As with those rivals, the cabin will feel pretty cramped if you have to fit in a third occupant, thanks primarily to this high center transmission tunnel. There's a central armrest with twin cup holders, plus a center console with vents, a cubby, and yet another 12 volt socket. You'll have to pay extra for the USB points you'll need to keep the kids quiet with their games on longer journeys. This rear bench can't slide as it would on some rivals, but you can specify an optional power reclining seat back. There are netted seat back pockets, overhead LED reading lights, coat hooks in the grab handles, and reasonably sized door bins in the lovely double stitched silver trimmed door cards. These little rear quarter windows let in much needed light and the cabin back here will feel particularly airy if you stretch to a model with this huge panoramic glass roof, though it does slightly reduce headroom. Now, let's have a look at the boot, accessed on almost all models via this powered tailgate that can feature gesture control. Useful if you happen to be approaching your F-Pace, laden down with bags and want to open the rear hatch with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper. Now, it rises to reveal one of the larger luggage compartments in the mid-sized SUV segment. The dry load space capacity for mainstream models rated at 601 litres, enough for up to eight carry-on suitcases. As you might be able to tell from this curiously sloped entry section to the load bay floor of this plug-in hybrid variant, we haven't got anything like that here, thanks to the battery pack which must lie beneath the base of the cargo area. Dry capacity in this case falls to 485 litres. And as you can see, you're heavily compromised in terms of underfloor space too. Annoyingly, the little compartment you do get under here isn't big enough to stash the charging lead. Above deck though, even with this P400E variant, a set of golf clubs or a child buggy will easily fit. Across the range, the cargo areas accessed across this rather impractical metal covered loading lip, which will quickly scratch and scuff, but it's usably shaped too and quite long, measuring 1,018 millimeters up to the rear seat backs. As well as the usual tie downs and bag hooks, Jaguar also supplies four of these little metal catches to help secure items. And of course, you can specify the usual optional nets and rails if you want to go further. Now, it's a pity this right-hand side fuse box lid isn't better secured, but there's a netted area on the left and LED lights on either side. Plus, the rear bench is split in a flexible 40-20-40 formation, so you can slide longer items like skis in between a couple of rear-seated passengers. 
Those needing more space will be irritated to find that Jaguar still insists on charging an insignificant amount extra for catches to push forward the rear bench. We don't have them here. Without them, you have to go round to the side doors and use the catches in the seats. With all three rear seat segment portions dropped down, the floor isn't quite flat, but the 1,428-litre dry cargo capacity provided is reasonably sized for this class of car. That falls to 1,299 litres for this plug-in variant. Given the rival models Jaguar hopes to target in the mid-size premium SUV market, the F-Pace's pricing is relatively predictable. The mainstream range starting at around £40,000 and extending up towards the £60,000 mark. Trim levels vary depending on the engine you choose, but the core ones you'll mostly be offered are base S-Spec, then R-Dynamic S and an R-Dynamic SE variant, also available in R-Dynamic Black form. Our Dynamic HSE gets you all the bells and whistles. Whatever your choice, bear in mind that the all-wheel drive system and automatic gearbox that customers in this segment now expect are included as standard, even at the very bottom of the range. Take that into account, and if you were to look back to the prices being charged at this F-Pace model's original launch, you'd find that they haven't actually risen all that much, which is refreshing. Especially given the way that the car itself is now so much better. For a start, all the mainstream diesel variants, the models that most customers are likely to choose, now feature the company's latest MHEV mild hybrid engine tech. The majority will be choosing between the two least powerful variants, the D165 and the D200. There's a premium of around £2,000 to go from one to the other. Now, it's hard to understand why Jaguar feels the need to charge so much more for its base petrol variant, the four-cylinder P250 model, priced from launch at around £48,000, particularly as this derivatives engine is the only one in the range lacking the MHEV technology. From there, around £55,000 is the next pricing milestone, the sum that allows you to choose either the six-cylinder D300 MHEV diesel or, more likely, the four-cylinder P400E PHEV petrol plug-in hybrid we're trying here. For those prioritising performance rather than efficiency, there's the choice of two top petrol variants, the six-cylinder P400 and the wild V8 5-litre 550 PS SVR. As we move on to the value proposition that F-Pace pricing represents, it's worth pointing out that there's only one F-Pace body style. This model's three German arch rivals, BMW's X3, Audi's Q5 and the Mercedes GLC, can all also be ordered with sportier swept-back body shells, respectively in X4, Q5 Sportback and GLC Coupe forms. But let's get on to this Jaguar's value proposition, which will base around the volume D200 diesel F-Pace variant, likely to be the most popular choice in the range. The starting price for one of these, around £45,000, is replicated almost exactly by almost every direct rival, by which we mean not only the BMW X3 xDrive 20D, the Audi Q5 40 TDI and the Mercedes GLC 220D, but also the Volvo XC60 B4 diesel and the Alfa Romeo Stelvio 2.2 turbo diesel. And you could easily pay a similar amount for two other would-be premium contenders in this segment. The DS7 Crossback, which you'd most likely choose as a diesel, and the Lexus NX, which only comes in petrol form and at this price point only as a self-charging full hybrid. Having been through this kind of comparison process, we wouldn't be surprised if you came down in favour of the Jaguar in this closely fought sector. And if you're leaning in that direction, then a strong showing in terms of standard specification might well seal the deal in the Coventry company's favour. So that's what we'll go on to look at now. At first glance in this regard, things look quite promising. Across the range, you can now expect to find a premium LED headlamps with signature daytime running lights, plus a rear view camera, a heated windscreen, a heated steering wheel 
and power folding heated mirrors with approach lights. In addition, you get all-round parking sensors, also headlamps and wipers, LED rear lights with animated indicators, a perimetric alarm, 12 months worth of subscription to the brand's secure tracker service and a wide range of camera safety features that we'll brief you on in a few moments. Inside, even the least expensive variants come with eight-way part electric front seat adjustment with heating and lumbar support, two-zone climate control and also dimming rear view mirror, a 40-20-40 split rear bench and cruise control with a speed limiter. There are plenty of standard dynamic driving aids too. So, on the move, you'll benefit from the Jaguar Drive control system that via various modes allows you to tweak steering, gear change timings and throttle response to suit the way you want to drive. Cornering traction is aided by a torque vectoring setup. And other driving aids less familiar in this class include two additional clever features. All surface progress control is a kind of low speed cruise control that helps you maintain optimum control in low traction conditions. If you're inching along across challenging terrain, you just set it and let the car take over. And there's also a low friction launch feature that works when you're starting off on really low friction surfaces, activating a special throttle map that helps you pull away without wheel spin. Media connectivity across the range is taken care of by an 11.4 inch PIVI Pro infotainment screen that includes navigation, voice control, a 125 watt Jaguar sound system, a DAB tuner, Bluetooth for your phone and USB connectivity, plus access to the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems. The PIVI Pro system also includes an online pack with data plan for 12 months so that you can enjoy your favourite music streaming from multiple sources, including Spotify, TuneIn and Deezer. PIVI Pro also comes with seamless connectivity, ensuring that your F-Pace will stay up to date through over-the-air software updates. So, you'll get into one one day and find it able to do something it couldn't do the day before, which is quite cool. The PIVI Pro infotainment system works with a remote app that allows you to control all kinds of vehicle functions from your smartphone. You can preset navigation destinations, confirm your vehicle's location, check fuel levels and set the interior temperature all before you open the car door. And along the way, intelligent rerouting can find you the best road to take, as well as updating parking availability, fuel price comparisons, cafe locations and traffic hotspots. Intelligent and intuitive, it seeks to learn your regular favourite routes so that the navigation system's smart voice guidance can make sure your favourite song won't be interrupted with unnecessary instructions. All this is included whatever F-Pace variant you decide upon. Now, the trim starting point with most of the engines is S-Trim, which, as well as all the standard kit we've just mentioned, also gives you 19-inch style spec wheels, replacing the 18-inch 10-spoke rims of the base version, plus grained leather upholstery, 12-way power-adjustable front seats and a powered tailgate. Upgrade yourself to the R-Design S model and you'll get a sportier look and feel with a more purposeful front bumper, a dark R-Dynamic front grille and a gloss black finish for the 19-inch wheels. Plus, inside with the R-Dynamic S spec, you'll be treated to sports seats with contrast stitching, an ebony Mortzine headliner, R-Dynamic branded metal tread plates and an R-Dynamic branded steering wheel. The next step up in the lineup is the R Dynamic SE level of trim we've opted for here. Recognisable by larger 20 inch style 5 split spoke, gloss grey diamond turned wheel rims, and animated directional indicators. This is the level in the range you need to stretch to in order to get Jaguar's interactive driver display screen, replacing the usual conventional instrument binnacle dials. Plus, there's powered steering column adjustment. Keyless entry, bright metal pedals, an auto dimming driver's side mirror, auto high beam assist and a slightly larger package of camera safety kit.
much the same kind of kit level, is provided by the alternative R-Dynamic Black variants, which get a meaner look, courtesy of the added dark trimming features of Jaguar's black exterior pack, and also feature 20-inch 10-spoke gloss black wheels, red brake calipers, gloss black roof rails, metallic paint, privacy glass, perforated leather sports seats, and a fixed panoramic roof. Finally, if you want a real touch of luxury with your F-Pace, there's the top R-Dynamic HSE trim level, which gets 21-inch Style 5 split-spoke satin dark grey diamond turned wheel rims, softer Windsor leather upholstery, 14-way power adjustable performance seats in the front, adaptive cruise control and a Meridian sound system audio upgrade. The top high-performance V8-powered SVR variant obviously has its own very specific specification. Building on the features included with R-Dynamic HSE trim, the F-Pace SVR is recognisable by a unique SV exterior body styling pack along with 21-inch style-forged five-split-spoke satin technical grey diamond-turned wheels fitted out with red brake calipers. You also get performance seats trimmed in ebony suede cloth and ebony Windsor leather and a switchable active sports exhaust and an even lengthier list of camera safety features. On to options and as you might expect from a premium brand there's a vast selection of extras for potential buyers to choose from. We think that many owners are going to want to look at features like Wi-Fi enablement, roof rails, a gesture feature for the power tailgate, the rear seat remote release levers and some sort of spare wheel, possibly also the fixed or sliding panoramic glass roof, privacy glass, front fog lamps, the Meridian sound system upgrade and the 3D surround view camera. Here we've also got various climate options fitted, a lockable cooled glove box, an air quality sensor and this revised F-Pace model's clever cabin air purification plus ionisation system, which has a PM 2.5 filter featuring a filtration system capable of capturing ultra-fine particles. Those last three cooling features can also be bundled together with four-zone climate control as part of an optional hot climate pack. What else? Well, you might want a wireless phone charger and a head-up display in this Jaguar. And if you do, rather than ordering those items separately, it's worth knowing that they're available as part of an optional technology pack, also including a solar attenuating windscreen. And if your F-Pace doesn't already have it, Jaguar's interactive driver display instrument binnacle screen. Also worth a look is the Park Assist Pack, incorporating that useful 3D surround view camera we mentioned earlier, along with a Park Assist system to steer you into spaces. An option available across the range that we think all owners may want to look at is the Activity Key, a useful thing to have as you can wear it like a watch, yet open and lock the car just by presenting it to the tailgate. You hold the waterproof wristband near to the J of the Jaguar lettering on the boot. The activity key available on this updated F-Pace model is a second generation version featuring touchscreen controls and a digital watch. It's there to make easier the kind of outdoor pursuit lifestyle this car was designed for and is a feature that also comes included as part of one of Jaguar's optional packs, the convenience pack which also includes gesture control for the powered tailgate, extra power sockets and, if your F-Pace doesn't already have keyless entry and a powered steering column, you'll get those features too. When considering options, it's also key to consider technology enhancement extras now offered on this improved model, like, for instance, the intelligent Pixel LED headlights, which adjust their beam based on surrounding traffic and weather conditions. And we would additionally want to set aside some budget for the Adaptive Dynamics Adaptive Damping System, an option which is virtually essential if you want an F-Pace fitted with one of the larger wheel sizes. This setup uses sensors that analyse body movement 100 times a second and wheel movement 500 times a second, ensuring that the suspension should always be perfectly suited to the way you want to drive.
it works through the various modes of that Jaguar drive control system we mentioned earlier. Adaptive Dynamics can also come as part of another one of those optional packs. In this case, the Dynamic Handling Pack, which also gives you red brake calipers and a configurable Dynamics feature, which allows you to tailor throttle, steering and gear change drive responses more precisely to your preferred style. You can order both these last two features separately, and if you make sure that your car is fitted with the configurable Dynamics screen, your dealer will also be able to offer you Jaguar's ADSR Adaptive Surface Response System. This is the brand's terrain response technology, working alongside the all-wheel drive system in the most challenging conditions. ADSR alters its response according to the surface to maximise grip, helping you to handle the transition from tarmac to wet grass to gravel to mud with ease. ADSR senses friction levels and adapts your car's throttle response automatically to stop your wheels spinning. When conditions change under your tyres, the different modes blend together seamlessly so you can continue to drive smoothly even on mixed surfaces. Seat to the next thing, there are three kinds of front chairs you can have in an F-Pace, standard, sport or performance. And if your chosen car has only 8 or 12-way electrical adjustment, you might want to upgrade. With 14-way adjustment, the front chairs can also be cooled. And with top 16-way adjustment, you can add a massaging system too. And maybe also the lovely pillowy 4-way adjustable headrest borrowed from the Range Rover. Now you might want to upgrade the upholstery to perforated Windsor leather if your F-Pace doesn't have it. And if you do, there are a wide variety of brighter cabin colours you can specify that will really lift the cabin. Shades like Mars Red, Sienna Tan and Light Oyster. In the top SVR V8 model, you can even specify costly semi-aniline leather. Heating for the rear seats can also be specified, along with an electrically retracting rear backrest. As for other options you might want to look at, well, there's a headlamp power wash, a cabin climate preconditioning system, and a powered blind for the panoramic roof, which works via a mere gesture. Don't forget, too, that you don't have to stretch up to a quite pricey mid-range model like this one for various key items you might want. With lower order F-Pace trim levels, features like the interactive driver display, instrument binnacle screen, keyless entry, auto high beam assist, animated indicators, bright metal pedals and powered steering column adjustment can all be added in individually. On to aesthetics. Now, wheel rim sizes tend to be key for F-Pace buyers, so there's a wider than usual range of different alloy designs on offer in sizes from 18 up to 22 inches. This particular car's 21-inch, 10-spoke style, satin dark grey diamond-turned rims are particularly nice. Now, on to paintwork. Bear in mind that unless you want this Jaguar finished in solid Fuji white, you'll have to pay extra for one of the various metallic finishes. There are eight shades on offer, including this car's Portofino blue finish, plus two further premium metallic hues of Carpathian grey and Charente grey. The mirror covers and the side vents can be finished in gloss black, and there are extra chrome and carbon fibre finishes for the mirrors too. You can add in the black pack from the R-Design black model, which will give your F-Pace various dark exterior trimming features. And if you'd like to emphasise the SUV look, you can add side steps and body side mouldings. If you want to upgrade the interior of your F-Pace, we'd start by looking at the premium upgrade interior pack, which adds a touch of luxury to the cabin, giving you illuminated branded metal tread plates, a suede cloth headliner, bright metal pedals and the extended leather upgrade, which adds extra leather on the dash and the doors. All those items can also be added individually and the headliners separately available in either light oyster or ebony suede cloth shades. You might also want to look at various option cabin trimming inlays in aluminium or perhaps in satin charcoal or natural burr shades of ash veneer. 
On to practicalities. Now, we'd want the Load Space Practicality Pack, which gives you the rear seat's remote release levers we mentioned earlier, plus a Load Space partition net and storage rails. Again, all items available separately. You can also make better use of boot space by adding in a collapsible Load Space organiser and protect it all by specifying a rubber mat or a liner for the load area. There's also protection you can add for the bumper. And what else? Well, as you'd expect, both detachable and electrically deployable tow bars are available and all season tyres might be useful. There are roof crossbars that will enable the fitment of carriers for surfboards, skis, snowboards or luggage boxes. Plus, you can have an aqua sports carrier for kayaks. Cycle carriers for the roof and the tow bar can also be ordered and sunshades are available for the rear and side windows. We'd also be tempted by the rear centre armrest, cooler and warmer box, and you can add mud flaps, a dash cam, carpet mats of the luxury or rubber kind, seat back stowage, and click and go attachments that go on the backs of the front seats for the attachment of tablets to entertain rear passengers. If you've got pets, you may want to look at Jaguar's range of bespoke pet products, which includes a pet access ramp, a portable rinse system, a spill resistant water bowl, a foldable pet carrier and a quilted load space liner. These various pet items can be grouped together more affordably into special packs. Enough with options, on to safety, where as you'd expect most of the main bases are covered. And we'll start with the standard features. As you'd expect, autonomous emergency braking is standard. One of those setups that scans the road ahead, looking for potential accident hazards as you drive. If one is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Lane departure warning also comes as standard with lane keep assist. So you'll not only be alerted if you drift out of lane, but subtle steering correction will automatically be applied to ease you back to where you ought to be. There's also a driver condition monitor that scans your reactions for drowsiness and if necessary, will alert you to stop for a restorative coffee. Traffic sign recognition pictures speed signs as you pass, displaying them on the dash. And this feature works with an adaptive speed limiter, so you can program the car not to exceed signed speed limits. Jaguar hasn't bothered with offering a driver's knee bag, but twin front, side and curtain airbags are inevitably standard. More expected passive safety features include ISOFIX rear child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. Also, as usual, there's ABS braking with emergency brake assist to aid in panic stops, advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard flashes. And, as with most modern cars these days, there's an e-call feature that connects you through to assistance in the event of a breakdown or an accident and will automatically summon help to your exact GPS location if the airbags deploy. What else? Well, F-Pace occupants are surrounded by a high-strength safety cell. As for driving aids, well, Hill Start Assist stops the car from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's engine drag torque control to reduce the chance of the kind of wheel lock-up that might be caused by strong engine braking in slippery conditions. Cornering brake control varies braking force to each wheel to avoid unsettling the car too much if you're unwise enough to brake at speed in the middle of a corner. And roll stability control is integrated into the standard dynamic stability control system to reduce the possibility of a rollover during extreme turns at speed. Plus, if you fitted a tow bar, you'll benefit from trailer stability assist, which mitigates against trailer sway. 
Want to go further? Well, we referenced earlier that higher levels of trim get extra features. If you avoid the two S-Spec trim options, you'll get two additional items which can be added in at extra cost with a blind spot assist pack available at the bottom of the range. As that pack name suggests, there's a blind spot assist which works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out in front of other vehicles, steering you back to safety. There's a clear exit monitor which warns occupants against opening their doors in the face of oncoming traffic. And there's a rear traffic monitor which warns you of approaching vehicles if you're reversing out of a space. If you want even more camera assistance tech, you'll either need to stretch right up to the top R Dynamic HSE trim or add in an optional driver assist pack. Do that, and as well as those blind spot assist pack features, if your F-Pace doesn't already have them, there's also two more elements. A rear collision monitor uses sensors on the rear corner of the vehicle to identify any potential collision risk. If necessary, flashing the hazard lights to warn an approaching driver. In addition, you also get Jaguar's useful adaptive cruise control with steering assist system. Here, a radar mounted in the front grille maintains a steady distance of the car in front at cruising speeds and can break your F-pace, then automatically start it off again if you come across a traffic tailback. The steering assist element of this is also a feature you can set in a traffic jam so that the car can handle irritating, very low-speed stop-start motoring without driver intervention. The F-Pace ought to be a very competitively efficient choice in its segment. It does, after all, have the supposedly lightweight aluminium intensive underpinnings that quite a few of its class competitors lack. And it now has 48 volt mild hybrid engine technology too. Yet all this seems to do here is to keep this model's running cost readings on a par with its rivals. Still, that's perhaps not too bad a showing given that this car still weighs a bit more than the class norm. Both the four-cylinder MHEV diesel variants, the D165 and the D200, return identical WLTP efficiency readings. 44.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 166 grams per kilometre of CO2 in volume R dynamic S trim, which almost exactly matches what you get from a comparable four-wheel drive diesel BMW X3, Mercedes GLC or Audi Q5. Yet the curb weight here, 1,876 kilos in the case of the D200, is 61 kilos more than an X3, 71 more than the Q5, and a rather uber significant 141 kilos more than a comparable Mercedes GLC. It must be frustrating for Jaguar's engineers not to ever quite be able to solve the issue of weight in this car. Still, for this revised model, they very much got to grips with mild hybrid engineering, which, as usual with this technology, recovers braking and decelerating energy, then uses it during low-speed driving and to boost performance when accelerating. Plus, the system enhances the usual stop-start feature by cutting the engine when rolling below 11 miles an hour, saving further fuel. The efficiency difference all this makes isn't massive, but nonetheless, it's very well worth having, as is illustrated by the fact that the returns of the four-cylinder P250 F-Pace petrol variant that does without the MHEV system, 29.7 mpg and 214 grams per kilometre, are very little different from the readings delivered by the far more powerful six-cylinder P400 petrol version that has it. 28.5 miles per gallon and 224 grams per kilometer. For completion, we'll also tell you that the new six-cylinder D300 diesel, another MHEV, manages 37.7 miles per gallon and 196 grams per kilometer. And that the top five liter V8 petrol powered SVR performance version, which has no truck with the electrification whatsoever, manages just 23.1 mpg and 275 grams per kilometer. If you've budget to spare and want a green pump alternative to an F-Pace diesel, your dealer can now direct you towards the P400E plug-in hybrid variant we're trying here. As we explained in our driving section, this makes a 2.0-litre petrol turbo unit with a 143 PS electric motor powered by a rear-mounted 17.1 kWh battery that, when fully charged, can facilitate a 33-mile all-electric driving range. 
In theory, this model can deliver a three-figure fuel return. It's quoted at 127.3 miles per gallon, though in practice, its combined cycle reading would probably be quite similar to that of the more conventional volume diesel derivative. The P400E's 50 gram per kilometre CO2 reading will, though, do a great deal more for your tax return, as will its benefit-in-kind tax rating set at either 11 or 14%, depending on trim. For reference, virtually all other combustion F-PACE models are BIK rated at 37%. Unlike quite a few other PHEVs, the P400E comes with 32 kilowatt rapid charging as standard, which means that you can use a public rapid charger, if you can find one, and replenish the battery to 80% in just 30 minutes. At home, charging a P400E will take an hour and 40 minutes for a 0 to 80% charge using a Mode 3 charging 7 kilowatt wall box. A Mode 2 charging 2.3 kilowatt feed takes five and a half hours. On the move, to preserve charge as we explained in our driving section, Jaguar provides selectable EV and hybrid screen settings. Plus, there's a hold option should you wish to preserve battery capacity for urban driving necessary at the end of any given trip. Talking of drive modes, all of the fuel and CO2 figures we've quoted assume, of course, that you've chosen the most frugal of the four Jaguar drive control settings, Eco, for your trip. A setting that, as the name suggests, adjusts all of the car's systems for maximum efficiency. Of course, the driver will need to pay their part in pursuit of cleanliness and frugality, keeping an eye on the Eco data part of the PIVI Pro infotainment screen. Here you get various screen options. There's one that shows you the energy impact of various electrical items, the air conditioning, the heated rear window, the heated windscreen, the heated steering wheel, the headlights and the heated seats. And another with so-called eco tips that are supposed to improve your frugality, though some of these, to be frank, are a bit blindingly obvious. Things like aim for smooth acceleration and maintain a constant speed. Most useful is the driving style display that marks your driving efficiency from one to five in three areas, economy, speed and braking, giving you a driving score. There's also a history section which graphically shows your success or otherwise at frugality of your most recent journeys, rather cringingly awarding you a little trophy for the most frugal one. It'll also help that the routing software in the PIVI Pro navigation system can propose an economical route option to minimise fuel consumption. All the mainstream power plants do of course meet the current Real Driving Emissions Step 2 or RDE2 standard and Euro 6D final real world driving compliance regulations. And while we're on the subject of engine technology, the diesels like the units you'll find in every rival use AdBlue, a urea based liquid that's squirted into the hot exhaust to neutralise many of the harmful gases that would otherwise be blown into the surrounding atmosphere. The AdBlue tank will need to be filled up regularly, though it can last up to 9,000 miles and your Jaguar dealer will charge around £30 to fill it up. If you've taken out one of the brand's service plans though, these top-ups are included for free. A lot of F-Pace buyers will fund their car through a lease deal and Jaguar offers its own finance for this. Most of these packages include the cost of insurance, but if you buy the car with your own money or decide to arrange cover yourself, you'll want to know which group your car will sit in. Well, the base D165 diesel model is rated at group 28E or 29E. It's 33E to 35E for the D200 and 41E to 42E for the six-cylinder D300 variant. Switching to the petrol models, the P250 is rated at 35E to 37E. The P400 six-cylinder model rates at 42E to 43E, and the V8-powered SVR is a top-of-the-shop 50E. This P400E plug-in model ranges from 43E to 44E. Overall, that's a chunk above the ratings that apply to directly comparable rivals. What else? Well, you get the usual unremarkable three-year warranty, though to be fair, it does cover you for up to 100,000 miles. And service intervals are set at 21,000 miles or every 24 months, whichever comes first. Though it would be sensible to consider one of Jaguar's service plans that cover you for virtually everything in advance. 
There's a standard mileage service plan that covers you for five years or 50,000 miles, or a high mileage service plan that covers five years or 75,000 miles. Both packages include engine oil and filters, checking and topping up brake fluid, and a 24-month guarantee on any replacement parts. Should anything go wrong, Europe-wide breakdown assistance is part of the deal for three years. As for depreciation, well, the news is almost universally positive here. A typical variant will still be worth between 52 and 59% of its original purchase price after three years and 36,000 miles, which is a very class competitive result indeed. The base D165S trimmed variant being a particularly strong performer. Remember that with the petrol versions, the residual figures will be lower. Stick with the black pump, and despite its unremarkable efficiency readings, thanks to this residual showing, an F-Pace should still be very cost-effective to lease for company or private drivers, whether you choose Jaguar's own scheme or one of the many others on offer. The F-Pace has been well received and with good reason. Look at it, drive it and analyse it and you feel you've a product born out of generations of development. It's hard to believe this was Jaguar's very first stab at the SUV segment. The brand's decision to stay true to its principles has helped enormously here. This could have been merely a rebadged Range Rover Velar or simply a clone of the rival German models already well established in this market. Instead, the F-Pace has its own identity. Thanks to the sophisticated aluminium chassis, there's a very Jaguar-like feel to the way this car rides and handles that you don't get from the smaller E-Pace or from many rivals come to that. But this car still weighs a touch more than it should and that eats away all the advantages gained from this revised model's clever mild hybrid tech. In the mainstream MHEV diesel forms most will choose, it's no more frugal or efficient than its unelectrified German competitors, which is a touch disappointing given all the effort the Jaguar engineers have gone to here. And if you want petrol power on a reasonable budget, as an increasing number of customers might, the unelectrified mainstream P250 variant can't meet the prevailing class standard. An obvious answer if you really prioritise efficiency is to choose the P400E petrol plug-in version we've tried for this test. But this model is expensive and even heavier. If you can afford it though, it's an undeniably appealing confection. Especially if you can specify an embellished version of this model line's much improved cabin, which across the lineup is now deeply desirable with the cutting edge media connectivity that's long been lacking from Jaguars of this size. And in summary, well, this F-Pace remains one of the standout contenders in this corner of the SUV market. No small achievement when you look at the quality of the competition. True, it might not be as rough road ready as a Land Rover product or as track tailored as a Porsche Macan, but most buyers in this segment though don't want a mid-sized luxury SUV at either of those two extremes. They want a car like this, a sporting SUV to savour.